Welcome to part seven of Models of Growth. Hey, I think you're going to find this very, very interesting. We're going to do some interesting maths here and uh, see something that you haven't seen before. And uh, I guess you can see up in the title what that might be. Hey, what's this? Introduction to logarithms. Wow, what's that? Anyway, here's the uh, focus at the moment. Let's go backwards. What do you mean? Well, maybe come and have a look at this graph over here. What we want to do is to say, if we have an exponential growth, what, at what stage would it reach 5,000 perhaps? We could read off the graph and say it's about 3.3 weeks in this particular situation. But is there, hey, graphs aren't a very good way of trying to work something out mathematically. Got all sorts of reading errors and plotting errors there. So how do you go backwards? How do you find out the time down here for which you're going to get a particular number in your exponential growth? It's going backwards. We've been substituting these values in, the independent variable, and getting these. Now we want to go backwards mathematically. And over here, for example, when would the value here reach 6,000? At what stage? What is that? Okay, can we do these things mathematically? All right, so uh, that's the idea now with all these graphs. We're going to go from the dependent axis back here and see what's happening down there. Or over here, could we tell anyone what that value was? Given the dependent variable, can we find that? Let's go backwards then and see what we can do there. So come on down here and uh, screen clippings here from Hayes and Harris and uh, you might get their book there. Let's have a look at some typical equations. Oh, well, let's work with this one. And uh, we're start trying to say, well, I think you remember this example from before. This is the uh, spread of uh, the grasshopper plague, and it starts at 1,000 hectares, and we see how it grows with time, if you remember that one. It doesn't matter anyway. So when would it be 2,000 hectares? When would it be 3,000? When would it be 8,000? When would it be 7,000? Can you see that this is going backwards? We're providing the value of the dependent variable and saying, when will that happen? Can we find n? Can we go backwards, as we were indicating in the graph? So there are some typical equations. As young mathematicians, we've got to be able to solve those. OK, so uh, do you see any difference between the four equations. Two of them, mathematically, are very similar. The other two are very similar but different from the other pair. Oh, well, come down and have a look and see if you got that right. Can you see I've put two here and I've parked the other two over on the other side. Why is that? Well, I've done a little bit of doodling here. And there, and what do you notice? Have a good look. Well, first of all, I've tried to isolate this term. And with solution of equations, there's a common approach. We try to find the unknown by getting it on a side by itself. Or well, quadratics is a bit different. And higher degree polynomial is a bit different. But here, we will try to remove the 1,000. So it's been times by 1,000, our term. Here, it's been times by 1,000. We will now divide by 1,000 and get 2 and 2 left on the other side. And the 2s uh, are in red. Why is that? Let's have a look. If you've got 2, the same base, here and here, raised to different powers, but they are equal, ooh, that's not possible. That implies the powers must be equal. I think a method of solution has just been born there. We will equate the powers, okay, if we can write both sides as a power of the same base. Let's have a look at that now. Let's finish it off. 1 divided by 0.7 would be n, or 10 over 7 would be n. And then we could get an approximate decimal for that and three significant figures and all that sort of stuff. Let's do this over here. 8,000, we want to try and find this term, being times by 1,000, so let's divide both sides by 1,000, we get 8 equals 2 to the 0.7n. 
And the hot number here is, in red, 2. Because 8 can be written as a power of 2. There it is. And this side's already a power of 2. So we have what happening here? The same base raised to these two different looking powers. But if they come to the same number, the powers must be equal, or the exponents, or the inde indices, whatever you want to call them. And so now we're going to say dividing both sides by 0 0.7 to get m back again, if you like. We've got that, which is 30 dividing by 7 tenths, invert and multiply 10 over 7. So it's that. And we could change that to a decimal if we wanted to. OK, what have we just done? OK, what we've tried to do is our, our approach has been to um, rearrange and try to write both sides as a power of the same base. OK, as a power of the same base. That was a good tool. And then we equated the powers. And that's logical, isn't it? Because we've got both sides, including an unknown in one side. And if we express them both as powers of the same base, those powers must be equal. Equate the powers and then obviously solve the equation. Solve the new power equation. OK, so these are exponential equations now that we can actually solve. OK, with this little process. Quite logical. It might be time for you to say, why did I park these over here? And I think you can see there's a red number missing, isn't there? OK, what's wrong here? Oh, can't write those two as a power of two. Hmm, that's going to be a bit challenging. We'll come back and look at that later on. And that's where the new area that you might not have seen before comes in, called logarithms. All right, let's go on now and have a look. And what have we just done? That, that's the maths behind it. Equate, but, put, yeah, sorry, get both sides as a power of A, and then the two powers or indices or exponents must be equal. Okay, let's do it. Four to the X equals eight. We will try to make both sides a power of common base, that's a power of two and so is that. So you've got to know your powers but your, your, your powers of two and three pretty well here. So four is two squared and eight is two cubed. Power raised to a power. What's the rule? This is it here. And you know that you multiply the powers before. We had a little, little look at an informal proof for that in the last presentation. I hope you did that. So this is two X equals three. X is three over two equating indices or powers. We know that's our step now. So let's try this one over here. We will try to write this and this as powers of the same base. Well, this one's written neatly as a power of three. Let's go to work on this one. Now this is one over three to the half. One over means a negative exponent. So you've got to be good with your rules. So check that last presentation. Do your uh, practice. And so 1 take x will equal neg a half, equating powers. There it is there. Be careful now. x has been times by neg 1. That is a plus 1 that's been added. So let's take 1 from both sides. Just watch that now. Neg a half take 1 is neg 3 over 2. And then multiplying both sides by neg 1, x is 3 over 2. Neat stuff, isn't it? And conceptually, pretty simple the idea, isn't it? OK, so come down now and uh, have a go. Here's some for you. OK, again from Hayes and Harris Publications there. So I think you should do all of them. Particularly watch out your ability to handle fractions uh, there, and uh, they're going to give rise to negative exponents. All right, pause it and have a go, and I'll show you the answers now. So come down. Here are some answers for you. Very good. All right. Have a look, you might want to discuss this. There's a no solution one there. Have a look at that and discuss that with your classmates and your teacher. Let's go on now to this little example here. This is a little bit uh, different. It's got a number in front of the term you want to find. Okay, so we're going to do what we just did with that example back there. 
So we're going to try and isolate this term with the unknown in it. So we'll divide both sides by 5. We'll reverse this operation. Okay, so we get 2 to the x equals 8. 8 is 2 cubed, so x is 3. Fairly simple. It's just going that one step further. What happens when you have a number in front of the exponential term? Let's divide by this so that we can isolate the term with the unknown in it, and we get 2 eighteenths or 1 ninth. This is already a power of 3, so we'll go for making that a power of 3, which is 1 over 3 squared. We'll just do this over here. 1 over 3 squared, and then that comes to 3 to the neg 2. So x is neg 2. Fair enough. We are following a process. Isolate that unknown, the term containing the unknown component. Um, write both sides as a power of the same base and uh, equate the powers and solve the equation. Okay, there we go. So come down, here's your next lot. Oh, hang on, we can't show you the answers there. Okay, let me just put this down a bit lower. Okay. So, have a go. I'll show you the answers now. Okay, so they're working out quite nicely, aren't they? These uh, uh, especially chosen, though, so that you can use that uh, simple set of steps. Come down and let's have a look at another one, which is a little bit harder here. Okay, can you see the idea? We've got an unknown exponent or power or index on both sides. Let's try to use the same idea. Let's write both of these as powers of the same base. So what is obviously 2? 4 is 2 squared. And half is 2 to the neg 1. Now we've got to use our power rules, get a single power here. Uh, this single power would equal the single power here. Oh, we, I think they've left a line out here. This is what we're doing with the powers, aren't we? It's a to the m, all to the n again. And so each side is going to have to be simplified into a product of those powers. So it's 2 by x take 1 on that side, and neg 1 by 1 take 3x here. The important use of brackets here, very, very important, because these signs are going to go funny in here otherwise. So it's 2 times x take 2, and neg 1 times 1 is neg 1. Neg 1 times neg 3x is plus 3x. Now, we can subtract 2x from both sides, so we're collecting the x's up there, and add 1 to both sides, so we're collecting the numbers over there. So we've got neg 1 equals x, or x equals neg 1. So you've got to watch your algebra here. The collection of terms, and multiplying the powers together when there's a negative. And don't forget, it's neg 1 times all of this. Okay, there it is using a bracket. Be careful there. Okay, are you ready to have a go? Come down here. Here's your batch. Be careful there. Okay, so pause the presentation. Have a go and I'll show you the answers. You should be careful in setting out all the steps. Here's some answers for you. All right, how are you going? Getting the idea? Yeah, I guess you're waiting impatiently for this. Oh, What's this? But what about the other type? Yeah, the ones that when you divide both sides by a thousand, you don't get the same base here. Okay, those two numbers, uh, three and the seven, are not divisible by, uh, are not able to be written by, written as powers of two, the same base as the other side. So, ah, I've got a little calculator waiting here. So it's got something to do with that, hasn't it? What might you try to do? Think about it. Could you try to write both sides as a power of some other base? What would that be? What, what's a convenient base in our number system? Think about it. What is our number system? It's a decimal system, isn't it? Deck, 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 decimal. That's in decade, it means 10. So we, what about trying to write both three and two as a power of 10. Well, we can't actually do that directly, but over here on the calculator, so let's go across to the calculator now. But looking in here, here's the button we want, log. It's the actual inverse function to 10 to the x. 
Instead of, instead of raising 10 to a power, we are finding the log is the power of 10 for the number. The log of a number is a power. Logs are powers. Get that firmly in your brain now. Power of 10. You can, there's one next to it here, ln. That's writing all numbers as a power of a base called e, which you'll find later on in your work with exponentials. So, the log of a number, the logarithm. Okay, let's write that out in full. The logarithm, the power of 10 required to get the number. A logarithm is a power, power. That's going to be important. You'll see that later on to really grab hold of that. So if we try to write 3, come back over here, as a power of 10, we'll hit that button and then 3, log 3, and we come up with 10 to the 0 0.4771. That's the power of 10 to get 3. So the log of 3 is the power, it's that there. And if we hit, hit log 2, we get 0 0.3010. We should work with at least four figures so we can round off uh, accurately in our final answer to three. And it's that, that's two, or look out, got a power or exponential rule coming up here. Okay, so we get that. That's doable now with the help of the calculator. Now what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing as before. We're in, aren't we? We're in using the base 10. Okay, so it's a little bit harder. The numbers are only approximate. Those decimals keep going. They're irrational numbers. So we'll round them off. But if, if we don't get frightened of those decimals, we can do it. Let's equate the powers now, as we did before. We've broken into this problem. It's 0 0.3010 times 0 0.7n. And so uh, if we multiply that out, we will have this. And over on the other side, 0.2107n and we're okay as long as you don't get frightened by these numbers they are only numbers, decimal numbers n's been times by it we'll now divide by 0.2107 okay and then if we convert this, this is approximate now as soon as we did that they should all be approximate because those decimals as powers of 10 uh, have been rounded off already so the three significant figures, this is, n is approximately 1.43. Okay, not hard, is it? That's a little tricky do there that uh, we've just uh, come across. And uh, we can, uh, as long as we can write all uh, numbers as powers of 10, we're okay here. So let's have a look at this one now. Hit the calculator with log 7, and you get the power of 10, the log. Here it is, I'm writing the log which is a power up the top there, and then 2, the log of 2 was 0 0.3010, so that's its power, and then I'm going to do the same thing as before. So now we can write this, and it equals this product of the 2 again, so it's 0 0.2107n, and therefore, and it should be approximately, so here 0.8451 over 0 0.2107, and we can do it to three significant figures, and we're in. Okay, so not bad, eh? You didn't know that button was there, did you? <laughs> okay, sneaky little things, these calculators. All right, well, let's have a look at what we can do. This is a bit clumsy here. This is a bit clumsy. This line here. Could we uh, abbreviate that? Let's come down. I just want to show you a neater way of writing what we do. So using the idea of log replacing the power. So let's write down what we've done. What we've done is we've applied logs to both sides. Find the log of both sides. That's what we did. We made it powers of 10. So we're going to slip down into this line without putting that clumsy 10 to the power there. So find log of both sides. So we've got log of 3 
equals the log of 2 to the point seven, uh, 0 0.7 times n. Okay, now, so in other words, we've got powers working here. So this is a log of 3, that's a power of 10, and if this is a power here, the log of 2, it's raised to another power, what do we do? We multiply them together, so hang on, I've, I've got to have more room here. So you put 0.7n times log 2. So you can see some rules are going to be born here, and that's going to be the next presentation. Now we've come across a function called log, um, or writing logs means powers of 10. We're going to investigate that as a function later on. But you see, if this is a power and it's raised to another power, you will multiply the powers together. At this stage, it's important to realise why we multiply that, because this is a power. The log of 2 is a power, and we raise it to another power. And we know, here it is, when you have a power that we're just dealing with these now, forgetting the base, we're just extracting the powers. Remember, come back up here. I am skipping the power step. I'm just extracting them. Do you get the idea? Okay, we'll come down and uh, you could divide both sides by log 2, or you might like to just go there and replace those with our number, and we're back to the same thing. We've just skipped that 10 to the step. So we'll be 0 0.4771 over zero, what was this, uh, 0 0.2107 when we multiply the number part there together. So it's approximately n there. Okay. Notice that technically this is the last line which is accurate because we've put log 2 and log 3 means the exact power of 10, which we can't write down because they're irrational. So this is where the approximation comes in. When we replace uh, log 2 by... Uh, um, 0.3010 because this is an irrational number. Okay, so um, finishing it off, 1.43 as before. So, um, you get the idea, but you've got to keep your wits about you. See why I was raving on over here about the log being a power? Because we are going to drop out the uh, explicit statement 10 to the 0 0.3010 is 2. We're going to call it the log of 2. Remembering, remembering it's a power. So all the rules for powers will apply to logs. And as I said, we'll do that in the next presentation. Let's see how this tool works for us. I think it's pretty powerful. So come down here now and uh, have a look. Um, again, screen clippings from Hayes here. So uh, let's have a look at this problem. 2 to the x equals 30. You can see we're in trouble because you can't write 30 as a power of 2. So let's go into the log. So we can write that. We don't usually write that in brackets, but it's to help you here. So we'll find the log of this side and the log of that side. That's invoking powers, right? Logs are always powers here of 10. I'm being crazy about that because later on in maths, it's very important to remember that. So now we've made the statement, we're going to write both sides as powers of 10, the log of both sides. And this one, this is raised to the x. So you've got log of 2 to the x, that's x log 2. Why? Because the log of 2 is a power and it's being raised to another power, you multiply the powers together. Okay, quite simple, that first rule. So now dividing both sides by log 2, and then you can put it all on the calculator. So this is a little bit different here. The, 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 the different thing here is that I haven't substituted numbers at this stage. So you could put numbers at this stage or just do it in one full swoop. So there's only one approximate sign. That's an approximate sign and so is that. I like the squiggly one myself. So the idea is you put it all on the calculator in one full swoop. So you're not uh, putting numbers or rounding numbers off and putting them down. So this is a good idea. I want to show you the numbers instead of the logs, but it's better to do less rounding um, as you go and put it all on the calculator and round off once at the end. Okay, and this, uh, usually in these courses, th this would be rounded to uh, three significant figures. Okay, in this course. Okay, so just remember that. You will be penalised unless they say, oh, it's, sorry, it's up here, four significant figures. Okay, 
So that's all right. Unless they say that the default, the default here is three senior configures. Okay, have a go at these. I guess you're getting pretty excited about being able to uh, expand your mathematical knowledge and, and do those problems that aren't obviously able to be written as powers of uh, the same base. But the notion's the same, isn't it? Uh, the notion's the same. We're going to use powers of 10, and uh, some approximation is involved there. Okay, let's have a look at the answers now. Here they are. Okay, how'd you go? Don't forget to put in the approximate sign, that one, or the squiggly do. Okay, let's keep going because we've got a new skill here, solving exponential equations. Okay, so here's some more, and of course we're going to do the same as what we did with the last set. We're going to stick a number in front of the uh, term containing that unknown power or index. So what will we do? Same thing, divide both sides by 200, so we isolate the term with the unknown, and uh, simplify this 6 over 200, indicate that we're going to write both sides of the power of the same base by taking the log of both sides. Remember, log is equivalent to power, power of 10, this type of log, okay? And so uh, we can write that and then just remember, you've got log of two as power raised to a power, you multiply the powers together, is a log of 0.03, and then put that all on the calculator in one full swoop, you're always to get to get t, you have to divide by log 2 and 0.04, get t back again, it's been times by two things, divide back again, it's approximately neg 126.5. And if you have four significant figures, that's correct. And you're doing it all with one entry on the calculator, so you're not transcribing decimals back from the calculator to your paper, and it also is more accurate to stay in log land as long as possible because the log is the exact statement. It's saying, right, write this number as an exact power of 10. When you try to commit it to paper, you can't put an infinite number of decimal places down, so you're rounding. So leave that till the end. Not a bad idea, eh? Okay, could you have a go at these down the bottom here now? And uh, I'll show you the answers. Okay, there's some answers for you. Hope you're getting some right. Go back and check uh, the numbers if you're not sure. Check your work on the calculator. Okay, let's go on and develop a bit. And uh, here it is, those uh, more difficult little creatures, uh, as we saw before, uh, where you've got a funny looking power, not just X or not just 3X, but some other stuff up there. So will you, what will you do? Well, just remember, we're trying to write both sides of the power of the same base. We've gone to base 10, because these don't have an obvious common base for them. So we're going to say that. I'm writing both sides as a power of the same base. I'm finding the logs of the base 10 of both sides. Better said. Okay, and now this is a power, and log, remember, is a power of 10. You will multiply the powers together. And here, getting a bit messy, that's a power of the log of 3 here to that power is 1 take 2x times log 3. Okay, so now we've got x's on both sides. You, you might get a little bit frightened of this, but you shouldn't, because what do you do? Just collect your x's up once you've uh, found them. So x take 1 times log 2 is x times log 2, take 1 log 2. This one, 1 log 3, take 2x log 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Collect all the x terms on one side. Here's an x term. It's neg 2x log 3, so add it to both sides. <coughs> And then over here, let's move this across, so adding log 2 to both sides. And we're gradually doing the same thing, only it looks clumsy, because you've got logs everywhere. How many x's have you got? You've got log 2, lots of x, plus 2, log 3, lots of x. Factorising, if you like. Equals this, so solving for x, x has been times by all of this. So you will now divide by all of that, in one full swoop on the calculator and then to four significant figures. Okay, so don't get frightened of bigger expressions in here. Remember, log is just a power, and remember our basic solution there, when you uh, equate them, you've got to isolate the number of x's and solve for it. Just because they've got logs, don't get frightened. Log is a power, it's just an ordinary number. Okay, so come down now, and have a look at these.
Okay, so uh, have a go. It's interesting here. Um, what you might do with that, just remember, logs are powers. So if you're adding them, what does that really mean? Okay, investigate that. We'll do some log rules later on. Hayes and Harris do, does this course in a slightly different order. Um, but uh, you'll see things evolve this way. Okay, I want to show you the answers now. Okay, there's some answers for you. Now, you might say, well, honey, this is getting a bit boring with all these X's and that. Can I do something practical? Well, yeah. Well, we've got one here for you, mate. Let's go back to where we started on the first page. Here we've got this grasshopper plague. There it is. This is the number of hectares, n weeks, n is the number of weeks uh, for the initial observation. And we want to know how many hectares are being affected. So here's an accurate graph. We know you can't do this accurately using a graph, even if it's an accurate graph, because you can't read the, the scale and the points aren't accurately drawn by hand. And we want to find when it's going to equal 3,000. So we're going to create an exponential equation. Just remember, if you ever ask to do a graph, you must have labelled axes with units. So here, ooh, that should have hectares. Okay, should have HA up there. And then your scale must be labelled, not just dashes on it, because this is two squares for one unit, and up here, two squares is 2,000 units. So there's a fair bit of work in drawing a graph. So you've got to have all those things there. Don't just draw it on the calculator and have a rough sketch put on your page. That's no good. It's a mathematical representation. You want it as precise and labelled as possible. But what we're really interested in here is as a budding young mathematician, what is the absolutely most accurate answer you can get? So we're going to put the expression, we want to know working backwards, what n produces 5,000. Earlier on, we were just substituting the value in and, and getting the, the value of the exponential expression. Now we're going backwards. So we'll isolate this term by dividing by 1,000. So it comes to 5. How do you solve an exponential equation? You always write both sides as a power of the same base. If they are not obviously powers of 2, you've got to go use powers of 10. So I'll find a log of this side and the log of this side. This is implying we're writing powers of 10. The log is the way we say that. And so now it's a number raised to a power or log of 2 raised to a power is 0.7 times the log of 2. It's the log of 5. Isolating the n here, you divide by log 2 and by 0 0.7, and there we are. Three significant figures here. We should put the level of accuracy. Okay, so it takes about three weeks and two more days. Changing this to weeks, 0.32 of a week is 0.32 times 7. It's about two days. So remember, modelling is not perfect. That's what we're doing here. We're modelling. Models of growth is the whole unit's name. We're modelling, and you will, uh, with your model, get a mathematical uh, state, uh, number, mathematical values, which are, are hard to interpret exactly into the practical context. So we'd say this is roughly two more days. Okay, so now they're suggesting you back your... Um, developing uh, understanding up with um, technology. So here we are, go to the graphing package and uh, we're going to draw the graph of these things. So I've got it uh, from the Casio here and uh, two different ways. So let's look at this way, the way they suggest. So this is in graph mode and the graph of Y equals 5,000 has been drawn and the graph of the actual exponential function 1,000 times 2 to the 0.7x, here it is over here, has been drawn. So how do you actually find when the two graphs are equal, when 5,000 equals that? You're, what we need to do is, I've gone here, shift, shift and F5, and come up with this window here. We'll just get rid of that. This window here, and there's the one we want. 
hit F5 again to get intersect and the crosshairs stick on the point and you say well that's where F5 is 5000 and you have this answer to many places there and you can round that off and you can see it's the same thing approximately 3.32 rounding it to three significant figures there is another way in graph mode and that's just to draw the graph of the function here it is here a uh, thousand times two to the point seven x and then you do the same thing shift f5 but you go to the next window and this is the next window can you see here it enables you to calculate an x for any y do an x cal so hit f2 in here hit f2 to do a calculation an x and it says Calculating x, please put in the y value, so you'll put in 5,000. And if you hit execute, it comes up there and opposite where y is 5,000. So you don't actually have to draw the two lines. Um, you can, could just draw the, uh, well, the curve and the, the line for 5,000. You could just draw the function and then shift F5. Just remembering, here we go, come in here. There it is there, GSOL. It's graph solving, solving all aspects of the graph or the finding the properties of the graph, if you like. Okay, so time for you to do some, uh, and uh, it's interesting stuff. So here are some practical problems, and you could check it using your uh, calculator uh, in this case and uh, see what you think, and just get uh, keep technology. Uh, um, abreast of what you're learning mathematically. We want to know how to do it mathematically. That's very, very important. But it's nice to see what technology has to offer as well. So pause the presentation and have a go. I'll show you the answers now. There are some answers for you. And you're nearly through. I hope you're not getting too tired there. But um, let's see how your skills are developing. It's exciting stuff. You can see how practical it is. All right, let's go down and finish off now with just this last little example here. And here we are back to generic land. Have a look at this. This is a generic formula in the sense that you can start with any W naught and look at how your starting weight will change and somebody else's will change the same way. So this is a general or generic sort of description of this radioactive material. So find the original weight and the time taken for the material to decay to, to, to a so-called safe level of 1% of its original value, where the particles being given off, therefore, are of not a uh, sufficient quantity to do damage. That's our safe level. Okay, so you always, for initial weight, sub in T is naught, put it up there, this comes to 1, so as we realized before in, in many cases with our exponential model the coefficient in the front here is the original weight all right so we want it to go to one percent so one percent uh, means you want one hundredth of w naught so w naught times that you could put um, here instead of one hundredth point oh one w naught if you Divide both sides by W naught, we get rid of that problem. W naught actually worries a lot of people because you don't know what it is. And the way you've been taught mathematics, you've always had numbers and things that you can work with which are clear. Now this is a notion of a symbol representing a W naught or an original weight that could be many different things. Okay, so here uh, we've got this. And therefore, we're trying to solve an exponential equation. An exponential equation is an equation where the unknown is in the exponent. Okay, so the method is write both sides as a power of the same base. Logs imply, a log implies power. So this line is saying, I'm writing, I'm going to write both sides as a power of 10. And then we've got log of 2 to the point neg point uh, neg 0 0.001 t so that's power being raised to a power if you like and we've got this multiplying the powers together and then dividing through by what's 
times t, we want t, so we're dividing through by the two things times that there they are over there. Remember to uh, solve, for this case, this is a linear function in t, all we have to do is reverse the steps that have been done to t. Okay, and so t is approximately uh, 0.6644. So uh, it would take approximately 6,644 years. Yet this level of accuracy, I think we really should go to three significant figures here because the model of this type, really we cannot quote so accurately as this. So I think it would be better to say approximately 6,640 years, something like that. Well, generally in problems, they'll ask you to interpret your uh, answer in terms of the context. Okay, and it's important to do that because we are doing modelling. Remember what modelling is. Modelling is using mathematics to describe some practical situation. So it's not about the maths per se. It's about getting an answer in context. We use maths to solve the problem, which should be stated in context, not as a mathematical answer only. Interpret it back. Okay, have a go at these and then you can have a rest. Got a few interesting ones here. So uh, these again from Hayes and Harris Publications. So uh, have a look, pause the presentation. There's up to number seven and uh, come down and there's number eight. We'll just hide that a little bit here. There. Okay. So pause it and uh, I'll show you the answers now. And uh, I hope you're proud of what you're doing. You've hung on in there for a while and uh, building up skills. Um, I'll catch you in the next presentation. Cheers for now.